Hi guys, Allie here with Tiny Home Tours. I'm so excited to announce that the team at Tiny Home Tours has put together a course on tiny living. If you've been thinking about making a big change and embracing tiny life, but aren't sure how, this course is for you. It's meant to help people who know they want to downsize, but aren't sure about what that space should be. We'll walk you through a variety of options like tiny homes, buses, vans, and RVs, both new and vintage. We'll share the pros and cons of each so that you can feel comfortable and confident moving forward with your tiny living dreams. We'll offer design tips and tricks to increase your quality of life in a small space and help give ideas for how to minimize efficiently and effectively. We'll offer ideas on how to make money on the road if nomad life is what you're dreaming of so that it becomes a sustainable venture for you. We'll discuss realistic budgets and the pros and cons of hiring a builder or doing a DIY builds. We'll offer advice on everything from dating, living on the road with pets, a deep dive into compost toilets, parking your unconventional tiny home, and living in a small space with children. If you purchase the course during pre-launch, you'll get a ton of bonuses like discounts and access to your instructors in a small group setting. Make sure to check out the website to see all of the bonuses because we don't want you to miss out on any of them. Once they're gone, they're gone. And make sure to sign up for the Tiny Home Tours newsletter to get all of the up-to-date announcements. We cannot wait to help you live out your tiny living dream. Hey guys, I am Kelsey. And I'm Tim, and this is Dusty behind us. It's a 1990 Toyota Land Cruiser with a Maltec camper conversion on the back. And we've been living in our old truck for the last three and a half years, driving down to the tip of South America and back. And now this new truck we've had for about five months. <laughs> yeah. And we're heading up to Alaska, and then who knows where after that. Yeah, this is our full-time home, so it feels luxurious compared to the truck that we had before, but it's still little. <laughs> Absolutely. take you guys inside. Welcome to our tiny little home. So this is the kitchen. We have a Wabasto diesel cooktop, uh, a little sink over here that has hot and cold water, um, little plugs so we can charge stuff up here, lights that can move all around and are nice and handy, and as you can see lots of storage. So uh, yeah this is our kitchen area. One feature that I like is all the drawers are soft clothes. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's just fancy and nice. Um, they all lock so they can't move around when we are driving. And as you can imagine, in a small space, you don't have a lot of room for stuff. So we have two sets, like just for us. Uh, we had people visit one time and realized we didn't have enough silverware for everybody. Um, so yeah, there's minimal stuff everywhere, but we keep like silverware. Um, pots and pans are in here. A bunch of spices and coffee stuff is in this one. And mostly food storage down there. The one on the bottom has our diesel heater in it and uh, some cleaning supplies. <laughs> So over here we have our little control panel and it controls the lights, our fridge is on the control panel over here. We can check how much water and diesel we have in the tank, uh, little USB charging ports, that sort of thing. The Wabasto heater control is over here and we also have a little shower which is pretty luxurious that has the hot and cold water and it just plugs right in. You turn the pump on. Oops. That one, it's all in German. <laughs> and you got some water, pretty cool. All right, one of my favorite features, just because it's pretty, is that the floor is actually teak, which is pretty cool. And our little rug from Mexico. Okay, under here is our fridge and it is electric, so it runs off 12 volt. And I think it's about 45 liters, which works pretty well for us, but we do have to juggle, like if we have a bunch of beer, take one out, put one in um, when we're doing longer trips. So I can't change it because it's in this little area, but if I could, that would be one thing maybe that I would make a little bit bigger, but sure is nice to have uh, cold food. So that's where that sits. Everything in the truck runs off of either electric or diesel. So that's really handy when we're traveling like internationally, we don't have to search out propane, that sort of thing. Over here under this seat is where up front all the electrical stuff sits. Uh, there's storage and then the water heater sits under here. And in the back we just have a giant space for random stuff which uh, we're not sure what to do with it, so much space. Um, up here we just have soft storage. So things like blankets and jackets live up here. Um, as you can see we have little LED lights that kind of surround up there. 
And then this also folds out to be a bed, so like in bad weather or if we're stealth camping, we can sleep down here really comfortably. Uh, so that's really a nice feature. So the windows are a very nice feature because they obviously open to give airflow and they have a setting like that for their out setting, but then they also have mosquito net that comes down and a shade that goes up. So it provides a lot of good airflow. We have five windows back here and then the tent up top also opens up. So on a hot day, you get some good airflow and it's nice and cool. Okay, so not only do we have the bed down here, but the main bed that we use in nice weather is up above my head. So you can pull this down and that's where we actually sleep. We call it the upstairs and the downstairs. <laughs> We've been uh, living on the road full time for about three years now, I think. Yeah, just over three years. Yeah. And then we've been in this truck just over five months since we bought it full time. Yeah, and I think uh, what started us traveling is we were teaching people how to drive off road and use their winch and all that kind of stuff. And so we would see our students go off and do these really cool trips. And we were like, well, we want to do this. When are we going to do this? Like someday keeps getting further away. Yeah. When are we going to do it? So we set a date and started going. Yeah, we set a date and just saved like crazy for a few years and uh, missed it by a couple of weeks, but almost almost left on the date that we intended yeah. to. And we've been gone ever since, just uh, working on the road and coming home to work when we need to. So. Yeah. I think for us, the reason we wanted this specific vehicle is because we want to really lean towards the off-road capable side of things. When we get to the sand dunes of Paracas down in South America, we wanted to be able to follow the Dakar Rally routes right through the dunes. So we wanted to have the most off-road capable vehicle we could have, but with the most space and convenience. But we definitely are leaning heavily to the off-road capable side over having space and like luxury. Yeah, it works for what we're doing right now. There's no perfect vehicle and everything has its pluses and minuses but for us right now this is the perfect fit for what we want to do and where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dusty is a 1990 Toyota Land Cruiser. They call it an 80 series. Uh, he's from Germany, so he's got a straight six diesel turbocharged engine from Toyota and a manual transmission. We get like 22 to 26 miles per gallon. So for tires, we're running Toyo Mud Terrain. It's just a tall, skinny 33 inch tire. Uh, the truck's full time four wheel drive, but it's got front, center, and rear differential locks. So we can get into those really tough and hard to spot find campsites. We've got a Safari snorkel with a pre cleaner. Yes, we we can go in some deeper water, but mainly it's to keep the air filter clean from all that dusty air when you're driving off road. Uh, back here, there's a little hidden door that used to be the rear door of the Land Cruiser that hides the air truck so we can plug in the hose and fill up tires after we've aired down to go off road. Spare tire sits up on the roof there and it's got a little T-handle you can lock it in place and keep it out of the way. So this is a carbon composite box with a carbon fiber roof that a company in Germany called Maltec makes. And it gives you the most space you can get while keeping that off-road ability. And it actually ends up being about as light as a normal Land Cruiser, despite all the space you gain. Uh, there's some different outside storage uh, on the side of the truck. We call this the garage and we keep everything from a floor jack to all of our tools and spare parts in here. And it's really nice keeping it out of the living area. All right, so back here we got a shovel to dig ourselves out of any issues we get ourselves into. What you see down here are just rock rails to protect the box. And that's also why it's got this cut up at the back. So when you're off road, you don't drag it over anything. You can see we have a little pull out ladder and some off road lights uh, so you can light up camp. Uh, what you can see hanging down there is an auxiliary tank. So in total, we can carry 65 gallons of diesel, meaning we're good for a couple weeks of driving and exploring before filling up again. This is just the exhaust pipe for the Wabasto stove and diesel air heater. And we've got a backup camera since you can't see out of this box at all. So. All right, on this side, we've got two fuel filler doors for the two tanks, the main tank and auxiliary tank, and the filler for the water tank. We carry 20 gallons, and then there's about three more gallons in the hot water circuit within the truck. The hot water is actually heated from the engine, and we found that we still have hot water within roughly 24 hours of when the truck was last warmed up. Uh, we've got some more storage right here that this is actually our trash storage. So we drilled a few holes in it so any nastiness drains out. And on the other side, we left it nice and water and dust sealed. Up top, we've got this Zargus box and we keep a lot of spare parts and anything that we think is going to be tough to find while on the road. Next to it, we've got a WeBoost uh, cell phone booster and a ham radio antenna. Up on the roof itself, we've got 252 watts of solar, which is enough to keep our 100 amp hour lithium batteries inside nice and charged up. 
All right, up here we've got a whole bunch of switches, but a couple that we use often are the air compressor switch down here, which is just behind us in the living cell. There's a pass through so you can climb back into the living area or up here, but you can also zip it closed and shut it off as well. You've got a switch here to recirculate all of the hot water through the system if you need more hot water. And we've got a hand throttle to keep the RPMs up if we're charging the batteries back up or maybe doing some winching, something like that. And of course the diff lock switch as well. Um, we've got little cell phone holders all around and an exhaust gas temperature gauge, which is sort of our main gauge to check when we're doing a lot of off-road and uh, big hill driving and that sort of thing. I would say try and be honest with yourself and what you're really going to do. If you're really dedicated to finding those remote rough tracks and getting remote somewhere in nature, you definitely want to lean towards the off-road side of things. But I see a lot of folks that maybe go super off-roady, but really lack, sort of miss those comforts that mm -hmm. maybe they would have wanted. So I think just be honest with yourself and what you're going to be doing with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, the space of a Sprinter van or some sort of van would be really nice at times for mm -hmm. us, but we know we're leaning to the off-road side, so we don't really miss it too much. Yeah. But if you're not going to go down those really tough tracks then might as well have more space and yeah or if you uh, want the comforts vehicle. of a home but maybe you carry a dirt bike with you and that's your way to get out and mm -hmm. enjoy it there's all i don't know there's all sorts of ways to absolutely to we, we could see <laughs> tons of different ways where we could change it if we had a less capable vehicle maybe we'd carry mountain bikes yeah. and that would be how we get a little more remote so yeah. so living in those small space like this downsizing from a house was it was kind of tough for us but we also were used to camping for i don't know two weeks at a time so we had kind of the setup dialed in but then we had to you know add some things take away some things i guess but we did get a storage unit so we kind of moved everything that we didn't want to part with into a storage unit and I think we traveled for about a year mm -hmm. and then came back and rechecked that storage unit and because our priorities had shifted it was much easier to let go of way more stuff because the yeah. emotional attachment wasn't there because we wanted to be on the road and not in a house and so I think that was the easiest way for me was like I got to hang on to all these things that I thought were precious to me and then once my priorities had shifted they weren't so precious anymore and that was easier to get rid of. Yeah we found a year or two years time made a lot of the things that we absolutely had to hold on to mm -hmm. in that storage unit worthless yeah. and so we got rid of almost everything else and now we're down to probably a five foot by five foot area yeah. of all the things that we've actually put that in storage in the world. <laughs> and everything else is right here with us so yeah. that's about it. And it feels good. Mm -hmm. I'm Tim. I'm Kelsey. And uh, we can be found at dirtsunrise.com. Basically, all the social media is Dirt Sunrise. So if you look that up, you'll find us. Um, yeah, thanks for Thanks for uh, joining us on our yeah. tour. <laughs> and yeah, you can catch us each week. We try and upload a YouTube video yeah. of our travels as we're going around the world. Yeah, and links for everything will be below.